So I just wanted to emphasize, so I mean, a lot of this week was very abstract. I want to say that this is one place where it's a very, very concrete computation. I wanted to just say what this computation is. Um, so let me just say, okay, I, I'll just repeat what you said, maybe it's slightly different words. So, um, okay, let me just, okay, let me assume that what Sam talked about, where is Sam? Okay, that it's, let me just assume that it's a theorem. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so, sorry, I'm not following the notation so well. So there is the stack U. What? Q extended and Q. J low shriek. How did you know the, the closed stratum? Oh, oh, it's, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, it's this. So in, inside D modules here, there are these Whitaker guys that satisfy the Whitaker condition. So, so, okay. So uh, what we want to compute is this functor. So it goes from, well, let me call it d mod on q, but I put the Whitaker condition, n of a chi. And so they go to d mod on bun g, sorry, b generic, and also put this condition kind of no chi just invariance. So that's the functor we want to compute. Yeah. Yeah, so this is what we denoted W, kind of WG globe. And this is WGB. Okay, so I'll say abstractly what we need to. So to execute this gluing procedure, you need to glue two certain, to identify two certain functors. We need to show that this functor, under the identifications of the respective categories with the spectral side, goes to some very specific functor on the spectral side. So let me recap who the categories were. So this is, again, this is Dario's talk. It's, so this is rep G check run in depth. So this is, this is Dario's talk. And so, and now this is, this here comes Sam's talk. So, and it says, what's, what? In depth? Something very silly. Um, basically, kind of, if you stick another point, but you put the trivial representation there. Oh, I see. That okay. is this that. Is, this is your unity. Unital, whatever. Unital. Okay, so what's, uh, where is Sam is not here. What's the, uh, how do we know the category here? It's this quasi co on loxis. What was the notation? Quasi co, quasi co, something that's nabla, 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 nabla. And then? Well, technically you're also supposed to put nabla slash loxis g. Loxis g. So this is Sam. So again, and I emphasize that this functor here is kind of functor of very geometric nature. And we, okay, and now we identify this using Satake. And this is, well, Sam didn't specify how he does it. So there's some procedure. Okay, so I want to describe, okay, so now we're saying that kind of the diagram computes when you put some very particular functor here. Let me say what, this, what that functor is. So the functor is as follows. So we have this just quasi co log sys g check. So as we know, it's related by this pair of uh, adjoint functors. There is co-localization and localization. 
So what you do, you apply this localization, you, you put your cell phone log sys to check, and then, so let me denote by P. So we have log sys B check mapping to log sys G check P spec. And then you apply P spec upper shriek to quasi co log sys B check. A kind of because you upper shrieked, you automatically acquired the connection along the fibers. So that, and that's, that's how you go to this. So this is upper shriek, but it's, you, you remember the connection along the fiber. So that's kind of, that's what you have to show abstractly. Okay, so now let me tell you what you have to show concretely. It's a global statement. It, yeah, it's a completely global statement. Mm. So we've we've constructed equivalences here, 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 here. So it's so in the case of GL two, these are well, it just. It's two functors, isomorphism of functors. So you should construct an Yeah, I should construct an isomorphism of functors. But I won't. I, uh, I'll construct one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so okay, there's a space of ice maps, and there's a point in that space. Well, I mean, so you're, you're asking the questions about its existential question. Yes. So when I say that there exists something, so you can ask at every stage, what does it mean that there exists that something? So, I mean, I will construct it. I will, uh, mm, I'll execute a construction. So let, I, I, can, I can be more precise. I, let me just... No, I mean, no, no. So when I say a functor, again, so there's a space of functors. Okay, there's a well-defined space, and then sometimes you can say that I can exhibit a point in the space. In other words, I'm mapping something contractible to the space, and that's what that's what I mean by point. So if I okay. or f or physically a point. I mean, not even maybe not even up to any choices. Just for example, so example. Yeah, well, okay, general fact is the example I wanted to give. So, okay, we're talking about something we're basic to day one. <laughs> to what extent does the adjoint functor exist? Well, exists up to a contractible space of choices. Th that's what it is. And it's, it's the, same th the same story here. Okay, so... All right, so, so let, let me s just quote the result. So Dima, did you, Dima, did you say about uh, that it's constant term of Poincaré? Did you say that? I said the yours. But I okay, so let me say, so see, the problem is that we still have this, Sam didn't say, didn't tell us how he constructs this equivalence, <laughs> and he's not, he's, not, he's not here, so we don't even know. <laughs> uh, but let me, so, but, okay, I'll, I'll say two things. First of all, uh, <coughs> the spherical category acts on, on everything. And moreover, this, by naive Satake, so we have rep G check acts on everything, and this is free. So therefore, if I want to identify two functors, it's enough to sh identify them the values of both these functors on one object. So that's kind of that's the first observation. So that's kind of to, to, to pin it down more, even, even more. So, okay, that's, so at the end of the day, you'll have to perform, just you have a very concrete object, and this is basic Whitaker sheaf, 
and you, you'll want to say what this functor does to it. So and it's complicated functor as usual because it's have upper chic and low chic. We don't have an algorithm for com computation. We have to do something. And so, so now I'll tell you so what exactly you have to compute. But I'll, I'll say it more generally, not for that particular sheaf. So, okay. So, let's look at our category with glob, and we have D of Bungie. And as I said, there are two functors mutually adjoined. There's a functor of coefficient. So you pull back and you average to make it equivariant. And there is a functor that, again, my advisor told me that it's called Poincaré series, and to this day I use it, this notation. What it does, it's, it's just direct image. You take the space Q and it's just direct image on Bungie. That's what this functor is. On the other hand, there is this category, well, that we denote WGB. And there are, it's also connected by two functors, but in this case, it will be easier to first say the left adjoint. It's, it's the functor that I called the functor of, well, generic Eisenstein series. And it's the functor just of direct image. So note that, so direct image, <coughs> under what map? It's the map from bun G generic to, so to bun G. First, well, we know that this is not a pre-stack. You, you, you might wonder, why does this direct image exist? So what do I mean by direct image? First, you, you know that you can always pull back, up shriek pull back. So I claim that the shriek pull back admits a left adjoint. So namely, although this is not a stack, it's obtained from an algebraic stack, which is proper over Bungie by a proper equivalence relation. And this ensures that uh, just usual pullback admits a left adjoint. That's the direct image. And then I restrict it to WGB, which was a full subcategory. This is the functor that I call Eisenstein series. And that particular functor admits a right adjoint. I call it, well, generic constant term. And it's this pullback and then the average. And so what is really going on behind that theorem is the following assertion. That I upper chic, J lower chic is in fact the... Just one sec. So this is the geometric assertion behind that. So there's a, some calculation that's happening purely on the geometric side. It's an equivalence of between can canonical isomorphism between two functors from here to here. And so it is that isomorphism that is at play. So it's just a definition of constant term generic. It is that, well, two equivalent definitions. This is the left adjoint, and it, it, well, it's the, it's the right adjoint of this functor. Definition two, you just pull back to bun G B generic and average. Adelic N to, 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 to make it lie in our category. So by the way, note that this is, this is something, is Yanis here? No. Yes. Uh, it's something that doesn't exist in the classical theory of automorphic forms. So you see, both these operations do exist. We know what constant term is. We know what Poincaré series is. This guy doesn't, because in classical theory of automorphic forms, when you tr translate to the function, well, sheaf function dictionary, you only use one sort of functors. Either you do lower shrieks and upper stars, or well, or you can do use different choose different conventions. But you you can't do you can't use both. We don't know what this corresponds. And indeed, and well, and indeed, there is no meaningful way in which well you can glue a vector space of functions from two strata. Right? We know we have the gluing of category. Categories are glued by means of functors. And this is only happening at this categorical level. So this kind of phenomenon, it's impossible. No, wait, wait, wait. There, 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 there's a two different statements. Uh, here it's using by the symbolic of two things. You're just saying that you have no definition on the left hand side. Yeah, I have no. It has nothing to do with the, with the fact that <coughs> with, with your non ability to define gluing to vector spaces, it's not related to non ability to define. No, it is some kind of, well, you could have asked. So it's, it's a very basic operation, constant term of Poincaré series, you can ask, well, 
what does it do? What does operation do at the level of functions? Does it have any kind of meaning? So for us, let me just say, for us it expresses the idea of limit of Whittaker coefficients. So you take this Whittaker object, you shriek extend and you shriek pull back. And we perceive it as kind of what happens to your Whittaker coefficients when, when your character goes to zero. And so we say that, well, it's given by, well, we prove that it's given by this procedure. But I'm saying that if I don't know how to make precise sense of this sense of this procedure in kind of in the classical theory of automorphic functions, I don't know how to say um, how to make sense of of, the, of this limit. Uh, yes, I'm not denying that it's possible. I'm just saying that it's not readily available. Yes, it's kind of it's, it sounds coo cool to me to try to do something like this. I just don't know what it is. Again, it's kind of so having this categorical level allows you to allows you to ask this question of degeneration. One second. Uh, but we don't have them. We don't have them in, in automorphic forms. You don't. You don't. It's not, it's not nearby cycles. It's rather it's well, it's invariant of the mon monodromy in nearby cycles. It's more basic. Well, the two carry the same information at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Sashka. Say again? The only symbol here which does not make sense for functions is I up a shriek. Exactly. So that's, uh, uh, that's the problem. If you would describe, for example, your idea, though, like a, uh, a level of functions on, on the QS. But, but as you know, level of functions, kind of, there is no Verdi duality. It's like you only stick with I per star and yellow shrieks. Which are the objects? Pardon me? Yeah. So that's all I wanted to say. Dima, what, was there anything else on the agenda for me to say? Okay, so I was emphasizing a very different aspect. Okay, shall we declare another? So we have one more talk. It's kind of sound, sound exhausting, but... Um, so shall we declare another five minutes break and then... It's Nick's talk. So it'll, he was supposed to address exactly the questions you were asking. Why this kind of... This... To turn quasi sheets into D modules on a space that look, looks like horizontal sections why what you need is exactly equivariance with respect to the Hecke groupoid. Just you need to... Is that the reflect, does, re does that reflect the contents? Uh, well, it does actually. I'm not sure I will answer the question of why. Well, no, no, but that's what yeah. you'll talk about. Yeah. Okay, so shall we, Dimash, shall we say break? We'll